Mrs. Brewster placed Red, the new class snake, in Lizzie's hands. Is it slimy? Jack asked. No, it's cool and dry, Lizzie said. Do you want to feel it? Um, it's okay, said Jack nervously. Are you scared? Hector asked. Red wrapped his tail around Hector's arm. No, of course not. I'm not a scaredy cat, said Jack, but he didn't touch the snake. The next morning, Jack arrived at school early. Instead of going to the library or to the playground, he sneaked into his dark classroom. The light behind Red's aquarium shined. He could not believe his good luck. He could try to touch the snake without everyone looking at him. But wait, where was Red? He couldn't see Red. Could Red be hiding? Could he have changed from his red colour to green to match the tree branches and leaves? Slowly, Jack lifted the lid that Mrs Brewster warned them not to touch. Red was nowhere to be found. Red had escaped. Suddenly, the lights went on in the classroom. Jack, what are you doing? asked Mrs Brewster. I, I just wanted to hold Red, said Jack. His face went pale. How could he tell her that Red was missing? The two looked into the glass cage and Mrs Brewster saw the problem. There was no snake. Oh dear, said Mrs Brewster. At that moment, the rest of the class filed into the classroom. Watch out, cried Mrs Brewster. Red's escaped. Hector searched the library book basket. Lizzie peered under the heaters. She asked, Jack, why are you standing there? Jack said with his tongue sticking out, I'm trying to do what snakes do and taste the air. Lizzie sighed. Are you sure you aren't scared? I'm not. I told you, Jack gulped and helped his friend search for Red. The class searched for Red until lunchtime when Mrs. Brewster said, We need to eat lunch. I'm sure Red will turn up soon. Jack, Hector and Lizzie sat at their desks and opened their lunch boxes. Yikes! Jack gasped. There was Red, coiled around his water bottle. Red slithered off the water bottle and around Jack's arm. You're right! You're not scared! Lizzie was surprised. Jack grinned proudly. No one was more surprised than him. Okay, hi guys. Right, so after watching that little story, we are going to make our own snake. And um, what I'm going to get you to do is um, you need a piece of paper. Um, I'm working with an A3 piece of paper, but if you don't have A3, then you might want to try sticking together two A4s to make it into A3. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a circle, a, the biggest circle that I can out of an A3. Um, perhaps get your mom and dad or your brother and sister um, just to try and get you the biggest space possible okay and then you just need to do a, a circle outline like that all right when you've done that you then need to start on one of the corners and you're gonna do a spiral inside your circle one of the things you must watch out for though is don't make the um, spiral too narrow which means too close together because otherwise your snake will um, not work as well. So I'm going to start here and you'll see my spiral. And it's going in. Can you see I'm not making it too small? And then I'm going to stop it over there because now that part is the head. All right. And so what I want you to do is you're going to get your crayons or your pencils or whatever it is that you have. Um, and we are going to draw some patterns on our snake. So now we don't have to draw a snake like red. Um, you can do any snake you like, but I would like to see some patterns on here. And some snakes have diamond shaped patterns. So I'm gonna do um, some diamond shape kind of patterns. And remember the pattern is going to change as it twists around, which can be quite tricky. So just think about that as you go. Can you see that my diamond is changing shape as it goes around? like that anyway uh, you're able to do any design you like um, and um, yeah have fun with the designs
right guys, so once you've done that, you need to get your little paints out and you are going to paint up your snake in whichever colors you like. Right guys, when you finish that, you need to get a pair of scissors and you are going to cut out your snake. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to make a little tongue. So with your little bit of extra piece of paper, just get a little bit of a red. Paint on a bit of red. And then you can cut out a little serpent's tongue. So once you've made sure that your snake is dry, you need to take your little tongue and then we're going to stick the little tongue under the head over here, like that. And there's our little tongue and our little snake, he's so cute. Um, and then what you need to do is, and get your mum to help you with this because it can be a bit tricky, you need to make a teeny tiny little hole in the top of um, your head. And then you're going to take some cotton or some string or ribbon or whatever you have at home. Um, and you're going to thread this cotton into the head part here. So now if we turn this over, let's do this, you can see I've got my bit of thread here. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take some tape um, like this. Um, and you know what you're going to do also is you're just going to knot it, I think. Let's just knot it um, to try and not make it come out and then we can fasten it with the tape. Okay, you can always glue that and wait for it to dry. It'll probably last a little longer then as well. But I just wanted to show you what you needed to do. And then when you turn this over, you should have a little string coming through the top of the, the head. Now the reason why we've done that is because when you lift it up, this is the idea that your snake will do the dancing. So there's your dancing snake, guys. Which is pretty cool. And if you take it into the garden, it looks even cooler. Okay. 